Hey everybody, today I'm going to spend some time showing you how to install Kariki. In the last video I just kind of announced that it's there, but uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the GitHub and uh, there will be a link in the description, but uh, there's a lot to read there. Uh, it does break down the installation process. You're basically going to flash an SD card or a mini, a micro SD card. And um, the cool thing is that you can use a second SD card and as long as you format it FAT32, it can uh, be read in your uh, Windows or PC, Mac uh, computer, right? So, so that's cool. So I'm going to go through that too. I'm going to. I'm actually going to um, uh, format a second SD card, and we're going to go ahead and go through the whole process. But there is a lot to read here. I'm not going to go through everything. Um, there's a lot of updates. Uh, it, this is still a beta, but I did get a lot of feedback that. Um, you know, a lot of folks were having a hard time uh, getting this going. So one thing that's really important is right here where it says that some uh, RG35XX boards have issues booting Kariki. So it says here to download the archive boot fix for some revisions.zip and it, you extract it and copy it. So we're going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to get the download files that we need. Uh, I don't have an issue with my system, so I'm just going to get the uh, Kariki RG35XX version 8 dot image whatever but right above that is that boot fix so if you're having a hard time after you burn it and it doesn't get to there uh, you're going to want to check that out uh, as always you're going to need uh, I would recommend Belena Etcher to uh, burn your image uh, so you know that's been mentioned before and uh, if you're familiar with uh, burning images and stuff like that it shouldn't be uh, that, that big a deal but just you know you can download it it's free um, just go to Belena Etcher and check that out um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm trying to see what we're doing here now. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and um, burn the second SD card while we're while we're here. So I already have an SD card. I think it's it's got onion on it, so it looks kind of familiar there. But uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and um, uh, format it. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and just set it up. I'm gonna call it Kariki. I think Kariki two. All right, and then you're just going to set it up as a MS-DOS FAT uh, format, which is the FAT32. And then I always do here master boot partition or master boot record. So I'm going to set that up and erase it or reformat it or whatever. It's the same thing. So that now what I've done here is just I went ahead and set up my second SD card. Now the important thing here is that it is set up in FAT32, so it's not going to be one of those things where uh, I think in previous previous video on, on Batacera you, you kind of needed some special software or some way of viewing a Linux file system. Uh, in this particular case, since it is reading off the second SD card and it does accept the FAT32 uh, formatted uh, drive, you don't have to worry about that. So you could just slip this into your computer and then add uh, files to it. Um, so now what we're going to do is just go ahead and extract that uh, image that we uh, downloaded and um, to get it ready to burn. So this is going to be your SD1. Uh, the reason why I just took you through the SD2 just to have it ready. But uh, So once you extract it, it's going to create that image file. You're going to go to uh, Balena Etcher. Open that up. And you're going to select your image, which is the one that we just extracted. So there it is right there. We're going to select that. And then pick the um, the media that you're going to be burning onto, which is this uh, just an empty card. This is not my second SD card. This is just another micro SD card that I have. And once you get going on that, you get it going. So I've already I'm kind of speeding this up, so it does take a little while longer. But once you get through all this and you burn through it, uh, the next thing you're going to be able to do is either um, what is it called? Validating it, right? But I, I usually skip this process right here. So that's what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and skip it. But you can, you can, you can just kind of go through just to make sure that it burns properly, that it's, it's a good format. But once you do, I just wanted to show you that it does look like a Batacera um, disk. So it does have a Batacera partition and a share partition. So we're going to go ahead and take that out and we're going to drop it into the uh, RG35XX. I'm just going to call it the RG now from you know for the rest of this video I don't want to say RG 35 XX so I'm gonna go ahead and slip that card in boot it up and uh, excuse my dogs man they're 
over here scratching. It's summertime, so I guess they're picking up some fleas from the backyard. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and burn this thing up. So this is oh, okay. So this is what we're doing. We're just uh, booting it up. And I did kind of speed that up a little bit. It does take a little while. But as you can see, you're presented to like a, the Mega Drive folder because that's the only game that's in the in the, in the the drive. Uh, so you do have that, um, what is it called? Uh, Twin Towers or Old Towers. But I'm shutting it down just to kind of put the uh, disc back into the uh, into my Mac. So we can see kind of if it populated anything. So there's something interesting that I want to kind of note here. That at the time of recording the video, um, I didn't realize, but uh, I'll go over that as we get there. So the purpose of this was just to see after you install the system what happened. So the share partition is gone now. And all you're greeted to is this bad Acera. Now, so I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to see this partition because uh, it might be under that Linux, um, Linux file system. So you might need some sort of special software or something to even view this on your, on your first SD card. So if you put it back in and you don't see anything or you can't access anything, um, then that's probably what's going on. But uh, fret not, right? Uh, you can always use your second SD card. So right here, I'm kind of confused, actually. I'm trying to figure out, well, why can't I see the, uh, the like the share partition or where the, the ROMs folder is and the system folder and all that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, what am I doing wrong? Um so anyways, I'm going to get back to that in a little bit. But uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert that second SD card. So this is the one that we formatted earlier, uh, FAT32, and called it Kariki2, right? So I'm dropping that in. And uh, so what it's going to do is going to set up the whole file system on this card, too. So it does take a little bit. All right. So all it's doing right now is just it's going through the whole file system. It's setting it up, putting all the folders that it needs to getting it ready so that you can uh, have content and, and be able to play games and all that kind of stuff, right? So, and, and load it up for, for content. Uh, so same thing here. So you're going to be greeted to Old Towers because that's the only game that's in that uh, partition, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this thing off, the RG. I'm going to turn it off and then eject the, the uh, second SD card so that you can see what happens after you load it into the uh, RG. So there it is. So with Kariki now, it's already done all that magic into that SD card. So I want to show you the, the contents of that SD card. Because uh, at first, when we first formatted it, all it was was an empty card. And I labeled it Kariki 2. So we're going to go ahead and put that back in. <laughs> all right. So now we're back into the uh, system. You're going to go into Kariki 2. And now you can see you have a BIOS folder, a ROMs folder, and a system folder. So this is where you can start loading everything up into it. The cool thing about this is that because of this is a beta, um, there's gonna, you know, there's been there's been actually a lot of changes since it started. There hasn't been any right now because I think Acme Plus is working on some other stuff right now. But um, but anytime there is an update, it's really a lot more convenient for to have that second SD card. That way you're not having to constantly load it with content. So uh, right here, I'm actually I'm I'm actually a little confused here too because I'm like, well, where's Where's the hidden folders? Well, I didn't activate, you know, to view the hidden folders. So just make sure that you do that. Set it up to where you can see it. I think I'm going to get to that right now. It's going to wash into that. Um, but yeah, the, the convenience is, is that you're able to... Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Why can't I see what I'm supposed to see? <laughs> anyway, uh, so it's just cool as you're making updates or making changes that you have just your card that you can always kind of go to without having to mess with it and add more stuff to it all the time. Um, so yeah, it, it already populates like all these different system folders, all the, for the, all the emulators. So that's where you'll be able to put all your games. Now in each of these folders is where you will put your media. So uh, if you want to show, if you want it to show your covers um, in each of these uh, different emulator folders, you're going to have a media folder and an images folder. And then those images should be, I think, PNG files, but then they should match whatever the uh, ROM is. So if it's, uh, let's say it's Mario um, dot, uh, zip, right? You're gonna ha have it, it's gonna be Mario.png. All right, so here's where I'm, I actually, you know, finally remembered to uh, view the hidden folders. Uh, so as you can see there, there's like a dot config, dot simple menu, dot volume, right? So the dot simple menu, that's where all the good stuff's at. Uh, if you go into themes, 
And uh, the, the theme that, that I'm using is that ATC Elegant Color. That's what comes stock with the uh, Kariki uh, image anyway. So if you go into each of those, fold, the resources folder, it's, um, it's all the images for, that represent all the emulators. So if you're one that likes to tinker or uh, make custom stuff, that's where you'll put all your custom images. Uh, if you'd like something better, if you want to design something unique, uh, that's kind of where you'll be able to put everything. And then there's individual config files for uh, some of the um, standalone emulators that you'll uh, generate as you're launching games and things like that. But uh, but yeah, this is something that I was looking for earlier and I was kind of struggling. But but yeah, just make sure that you have your um, hidden folders uh, on or to view hidden folders so that you can access that. Um, so here I'm just kind of... What am I doing here? Oh, okay, so this is the actual SD card that I usually use. So this is the SD card that I always have that you know I've done for all the videos and my demonstrations and things like that. So uh, because I installed a fresh copy of Kariki and I'm putting the second SD card, it's it's doing its thing all over again. That's why it took a little while, but normally it's it's really fast. Uh, but because it didn't recognize that second SD card and it hadn't been populated, it took a little bit of time. So here I am just kind of navigating through all the different folders, you know, I have different systems. There's, you know, Nintendo 64 and all those games do launch and run fairly well. Uh, Dreamcast, not so great, but uh, some of them you might get, you might get lucky with a couple of games that will run okay. But um, all the basic systems, they run well. What, what's unique about this system uh, or Kariki is that you can play some PSP, uh, Nintendo DS, uh, Dreamcast, Nintendo 64. So those are some systems that you can't do with other firmwares, which uh, makes it unique. Uh, but again, I'm just taking you through all the different folders, all the different uh, sections, and just showing you what it looks like when you do populate it with uh, content. Um, there's one of my favorite sections, Neo Geo. <laughs> Obviously, you can you know load it up with MAME games. And if you look back at the um, at the uh, GitHub, you can see like all the different cores that were updated or added to to this system. And they're they're pretty uh, current also, so it's kind of cool. But yeah, that's it. Uh, towards the end, though, what we're gonna do is all I'm gonna do is just show you. Um, I think it's Castlevania. What is it? X or something on PSP. And I'm actually gonna run the game. It is a little um, kind of poppy in the beginning. The sound is kind of like it pops. Um, but uh, th through the little bit of gameplay that's there, it it does run really well. So I just wanna wanna show that to you guys so you can check it out. And um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So once we get to that point, I'm going to shut up and let you uh, just watch it if you want to. Here we go.
All right, so that was pretty much it right there, man. So uh, hopefully that helped you guys out. Uh, leave any questions you have in the comments. But uh, as always, thanks for watching.